it's me. Um, sorry, I look sweaty. I am sweaty. My apartment's like a thousand degrees, so um, bear with me here. Uh, but we are on chapter 10. Um, let's see. We left off. Um, Emma had had a, a, a decent day. Um, she, like, knew more of the kids' names. Um, she used the right trash cans at lunch. That was good. Um, and Jack is coming over to her house. So that's exciting. Maybe Jack is a potential friend. We'll have to see. All right, chapter 10. Rabbits have scent glands under their chins. They rub their chins on things to claim them as their own. Wow. Okay. When I got home, Mom told me that Owen had texted. He had made the soccer team. Now he'd probably have practice every day. That's great, I said fat, flatly, unpacking my backpack. I could smell what she'd been baking some, I could tell she'd been baking something yummy. What smells so good? Mom grinned. I baked chocolate chip cookies. How many kids are coming over today? Only Jack, I said. Thanks so much for making cookies though. And can I borrow your phone? I'll need to take a video. Mom nodded. Sure, it's on the counter. I put her phone in my, in my pocket. Um, just so you know, I said, feeling like I should warn her. Jack's a bit different. I think he might have some special needs. Different makes life more interesting, Mom said. I nodded, though that seemed like one of those easy things people say to gloss over the hard parts. He especially likes to talk about animals. Just like you, Mom said. Even more than me, I said. In fact, there were, there were a TV game, if there were a TV game show where all the categories were animals, Jack could be a millionaire. But when Jack and his mom arrived, I was surprised that he stepped back as Molly and Maggie came over barking, tails wagging. Girls, Mom said sharply to the dogs, go lie down. As Molly and Maggie trudged to their beds, Jack's mom said softly, It's a sensory thing. Jack loves to read about animals, but in real life they can be overwhelming. No problem at all, Mom said. Can I make you a cup of tea or coffee while the kids do their homework? Tea would be lovely. I'll put the kettle on, Mom said. Make yourselves at home, and if you'd like to wash your hands, the bathroom is right through that door. But no frogs are in there, Jack said sadly. Mom laughed. Oh, Emma told you about those? You're right. We don't have frogs in the bathroom regularly, but that's just a homeschool science project. The frogs grew up and we let them go in the pond where we found the eggs. Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, Emma had told them that the frog thing, the frogs in the bathroom were a lie. So she just kind of got busted for her lie. Um, let's work in my room, Jack, I said quickly to change the subject. My rabbit is there, but he only makes quiet sounds. I got a piece of kale and a few blueberries from the refrigerator for Loppy and the plate of chocolate chip cookies for Jack and me. Come on. As we were climbing the stairs, I heard Jack's mom talking to mine in the kitchen. Thank you for having us over. The other kids at school are mostly kind to Jack, but they almost never think to include him outside of school. So this is really nice. It's nice for Emma too, mom said. She's been hoping for a friend. I felt bad that Jack and I were both getting left out of things. Being left out hurts. I turned to him and rolled my eyes in case he was embarrassed as I was that our mothers were talking about us. But his eyes were focused on my bedroom door, his fingers flickering at his sides. He looked a little scared. It's okay, I said. Loppy can stay in his pen if you want. Then I opened my bedroom door. When I opened my bedroom door, Loppy immediately put his paws up on the side of the pan, pen, excited to get out and have a run. Later, I promised him, Jack and I have work to do. Loppy thumped his back foot on the floor. Rabbits thump to warn other rabbits about danger, Jack said. Usually, I said, but this rabbit is telling me that he wants to have a run, and he's mad that I said no. Jack stared at Loppy, his fingers twitching harder. Let me out of here. Did he mean Loppy or himself? Are you okay, I asked. I'm fine, Jack said plainly without taking his eyes off Loppy. How are you? I smiled. I'm fine, too. Loppy thumped his back foot again. He's mad that you said no, Jack said, his eyes bright with excitement. He wants to come out. Was Jack asking me to let Loppy out? Hey, I have an idea, but it's okay if you don't want to. A good idea, Jack asked. Well, you get to decide if it's good or not, I said. You could sit at my desk and pull your feet up on the chair. I promise Loppy won't jump up there. He could have a little run around the room, and then I'll put a treat in his pen, and he'll go back in to get it. Jack didn't look 100% sure, but he sat on my desk chair and put his heels up on the seat. As soon as I opened the pen door, Loppy hopped easily onto my braided rug. His first, his first free hops were always light and dainty. Little front feet, big back feet. Then he'd pick up speed, darting, around, darting under my bed and out again with long leaps that were so fast he'd lose his footing and slide on the hardwood floor. Jack gave a high-pitched laugh. 
He was, he's a waskily wabbit, he said in Elmer Fudd's voice. He sure is, I said. In between hops, Lobby would suddenly, Lobby would suddenly stop and rub his chin on something, claiming it. Dresser edge, mine. Heater, mine. Quilt, mine. Bookshelf, mine. Lobby paused and rubbed his, rubbed his chin on my foot, his whiskers tickling around my flip-flop. You, mine. He's claiming me, I said. Then Lobby suddenly leaped and twisted like all the happiness inside him had exploded and lifted him, lifted him into the air. He landed facing Jack. That's called a binky. I read about it in the rabbit book I got at the library. It means he's happy. I handed Jack a blueberry. The book also said blueberries are one of their favorite things. Jack threw the blueberry at Lobby's feet. He sniffed it and then ate it up. I should have known he'd love them, I said. My papier used to tell me a story about how Monsieur Le Pin tricked Monsieur Renard the fox out of his blueberries. What story, Jack asked. I hesitated. It was one thing to remember a papier story or to tell them in our family. It was a whole different thing to tell another kid I didn't even know that well. But Jack stared at me, waiting. So I took a deep breath. It happened once that Monsieur Le Pin saw Monsieur Renard from... Renard the fox sitting in a blueberry patch, grooming his beautiful red tail before he feasted on all those delicious blueberries. Foxes are omnivores, Jack said. They eat both plants and animals. Animals. That's good to know, I said. But Monsieur Le Pin has magic, and this is a story, so don't expect things to stay completely real, okay? It's a lie, Jack said, a matter of factly. No, though I guess... Though I guess if there were only two choices, it wasn't true. I shrugged. Stories are somewhere in between. Do you want to hear it anyway? Jack nodded. Yes. As Lappy chinned the leg of my desk chair, Jack pulled his feet. Jack pulled in his feet tighter, his arms wrapped around his legs. Okay, so Monsieur Le Pin said, Oh, Monsieur Renard, your tail is so glorious, but you've missed a spot. Monsieur Renard was very proud of his tail. Where? he demanded. What kind of spot? Jack asked. Or Jack said, um, pine pinch. Jack nodded and I continued. Monsieur Le Pin pointed, right there. No, a little more to the right. Almost a little more to the right. Soon Monsieur Renard was turning around and around, spinning so fast trying to reach the spot that he fell down dizzy. Monsieur Le Pin jumped right into those blueberries and ate them all. So it was. I could tell that the story, I couldn't tell the story as well as Papier, but still, it had been fun to share it. Lappy went up on his hind leg to look at Jack. Jack let his arms go. His fingers twitched hard as he slid one foot tentatively toward the edge of the desk chair. I held my breath as Lappy moved his chin across the toe of Jack's shoe. Then he landed his front feet back on the floor and took off again under my dresser. Jack looked over at me, his mouth open. He claimed you, I said. Jack kept his feet up on my desk chair, but his hands stopped twitching. Let's touch him. You want to touch Loppy? I asked, surprised. Only his back. Okay, but he doesn't like to be picked up, I said, so you sit on the floor and I'll put a blueberry next to you. As soon as Loppy came over for the blueberry, Jack reached out one trembling hand. Three quick, barely there touches. I waited for Loppy to hop away, but he didn't. He likes you, I said, maybe because your name sounds like a rabbit too. Jackrabbit. Jackrabbits are really hares. Jack reached out and patted Loppy again so lightly that I couldn't tell if he actually touched Loppy's body or just the very tips of his fur. Monsieur Le Pin, he whispered, and Jack Rabbit. That is the end of chapter 10. So it sounds like Emma has found a new friend. And it's so nice Jack's warming up to the rabbit. The rabbit's such a good friend to both of them. I love it. Okay, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.